In this video, I'll show you how to perform a basic initial configuration on a Cisco Catalyst switch. Before I go on to the actual configuration, there are some things that should always be done before creating your own configurations. First off, if you don't see this line right here when your switch is finished rebooting, then you need to erase the startup configuration. This is how you do that. Type right, erase. It'll ask if you want to do it. Press enter for confirmation. All right. Startup configuration has been cleared. Once you're sure that the startup config is clear, you should always clear the VLAN database and then reload the switch. Doing this not only clears the database, but it also clears the VTP configuration like the VTP domain name, VTP password, the mode, etc. If you don't reload the switch after deleting the database, whatever was in the old database will remain in memory. Also, if you decide to make modifications to the database, like adding VLANs, not only will the old VLAN info currently running, currently running in memory be saved to a new VLAN.dat file, but some of your new VLANs might not be saved. Here's how you delete the VLAN database. Just type delete VLAN.dat. It'll ask if you want to do it. Confirm. That's it. VLAN database has been cleared. <clears throat> Reload after deleting VLAN.dat. It sucks, but it's necessary. Here's how you reload. I'll ask if you want to proceed and you confirm. Okay, the switch is finished rebooting and we're greeted with the initial configuration dialog prompt. Just say no and go into privileged exec mode. Now that the switch is essentially a clean slate, we can move on to the configuration. Keep in mind, especially any pros who might be watching, now this is a bare bones configuration that is meant to get a switch on the network and manageable. Nothing more. That's it. Additional security steps will be covered in another video. With that said, let's move on to the fun stuff. First things first, name the switch. Name the switch. And host name. And we'll just say my switch. The next two things mostly have to do with making the switch more user friendly. First thing most people do when first configuring a switch is to disable the annoying name lookup. This is done because back in the day and even today with other platforms, whenever you misspell a command, in, privile in privileged exec mode, the switch would try to resolve the misspelled command to an IP address because it thought you were entering a host name instead of a command. As a result, you'd be left sitting there for up to a minute, sometimes a minute and a half, waiting for the switch to time out. It's not that bad anymore though. Um, from my experience lately, I've seen this time out in less than a second. And we can dem I can demonstrate this by doing something that's fairly common, misspelling conf t to go in global config mode. Back in the day, this message would sit there for up to, it, it could have been up to a minute and a half, trying to translate that that command, that misspelled command to an IP address. Try to contact a name server and then after the time, after it timed out, you get this message right here. I mean, that's good, but I like to disable it anyway. So to disable uh, name lookups, go on global config mode and type no IP domain dash lookup. And now we misspell a command 
Same command. Damn it. I'll show how to get around this annoying little thing too in just a second. That's the next thing I'll show. Alright, I'm going to spell conf t again. And it's the same speed. You know, time's out about the same. And everything looks about the same. It just doesn't try to contact a name server now. So, it's not a huge advantage in this case, but on some other, on older iOS's and other platforms, that command is a must. Here's the second item that most people configure in an effort to cut down on annoyance the logging synchronous command. As you may or may not know, a switch or router will pop up error or initial or uh, informational messages from time to time during the course of either configuring it or troubleshooting it. This is extremely annoying when such messages pop up in the middle of a command you're currently typing because it can cause you to lose track of where you were in the command, especially in a long command. And uh, I'll try to demonstrate an example of this. You go in global config mode. Okay. Now I'll exit out and try to type out a ping command. See what happened? Right in the middle of my command, it stuck this damn output in there. And. Now my command is tacked on to the end of whatever that is. I could continue to enter the command and press and press enter and it would work. But it's just really annoying. To solve this problem, you should configure all the lines to do logging synchronous. So in this case I'm on the console line. And I'll go to line console zero. Just type logging synchronous. Uh, you can do this on the VTY lines too. So when you tell that in or SSH in, and I'll do all the lines zero through fifteen. I believe there are sixteen lines on this, and do the same command. To demonstrate this in action, I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll exit out and type in a ping command. And you see that the output is put, I get a new line with my stuff still on it, and the output from the device is right above it. And I can just keep on typing my command without getting without getting lost. It's a great feature. Now that the switch is a little more user friendly, we can move on to getting it on the network and providing minimal security so that it can be remotely managed. First, we need to assign an IP address to the switch so that, it, that, so that it's reachable on the network. What I'm about to do is not a best practice. Never ever use VLAN 1 for anything. I won't get into why at this moment, but for security reasons, just don't do it. I'm using it in this tutorial for the sake of simplicity. Okay, I'm going to assign an IP address to VLAN 1. This will be my IP for remote management protocols like Telnet and SSH. Alright, to do this, I'm in global config mode. I'm going to interface VLAN 1. So we're going to configure the switched virtual interface. VLAN 1. I'm going to give it an IP address. In this case, I'll make it 1.1.1.1. Give it a mask. Just class C mask for the hell of it. Okay. Since VLAN 1 by default is shut down, we'll do a no shut. Or I'll just type it out. No shutdown. Now VLAN 1 should be operational. I should be able to reach my laptop with ping if it's connected to a port assigned to VLAN 1. And I'll plug in my laptop.